Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today hits my five month anniversary as a quadriplegic. That is our dog Moxie in the back, so I apologize. But, this is my five month quadriversary. Instead of doing our original videos like a sit down and talk video, surely we'll do that this time, but with a little bit of a twist. That we are going to hopefully be doing a little website thing to answer questions for my quadriversary for five months. But we are going to try and ask these questions and answer these questions as best as I can give you. And the first question, what's been the most unexpected change in your life? Probably this injury. I mean, my life was different because of cerebral palsy and I got the power chair at first, February 12th. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm just getting used to this power chair now and it's going to be a new change. But then as I went on and I actually got the injury, I realized... Well, fuck, I can't choose when I hop out of the chair. I don't choose when I walk and stand <laughs> up and to the fact that I don't have to use, well, that I have to use catheters now than, a, than what I did with cerebral palsy. But leg problems where I wouldn't be able to walk as long and get, well, was going to need the power chair when I was on long goundings. No, I can't just choose that way. I'm like, hey, I want to get up and walk. No, I can't choose that. So I feel like that would be the hardest slash unexpected change in my life was obviously my injury. This unexpected change in my life was at 19 years old, mid-diagnosed ALS, and I obviously got my injury. It changed a lot for me. Uh, from getting up and walking from the chair to having super bad spastic pain in my legs, I, I fell down the stairs after a large seizure. It's a whole thing. But I injured a lot of vertebrates, um, and it definitely changed my life for the greater. Uh, really unexpected because I wasn't expecting to fall and get my neck cracked. What's gotten easier over time? Mm -hmm. um, the thing that's gotten easiest over time is like really understanding my injury. At the beginning of my injury, I did not understand a lot. I didn't understand my sensation. I didn't really know how to cath. I didn't understand a lot. Uh, but now, Doc has been a great help with this. Uh, gave me a lot of realization on how not easy it is but how much better it gets as you go along because the more years the more months you spend with that injury everything becomes easier like a few months ago like I figured out how to cath my own self I was like oh my god like now it's been a wonderful thing to cath myself when in the first weeks in my injury I didn't know how to cath myself so that was a lot of independence just gained there it's always fun and great to learn new things that you can do for yourself because it makes a great big deal of independence I have limited mobility a lot has changed really it's mm -hmm. the people around me have changed the support i get has changed the the way i think about my life has really really changed um i remember right then and i'm gonna sound so crude but i wanted to fake pretend i was weaker than everyone and i had such a substantial difference in my life why would i want to be weaker like i love the place i am now i'm loved that i'm not that weak so my attitude and my perspective towards life had really changed over time and I am very grateful that it has because I feel like that was a real big wake up call. What's gotten harder over time? Um, knowing the fact that I have it because back then I used to be able to stroll out of my wheelchair, lift, lift up out of my wheelchair and do everything I wanted. Um, so that certainly got harder over time that I had the injury and it was something I'd have to live with for the rest of my life. It, it's just hard to think about that, wow, like, really, he, God punched me at first, but then I realized he kind of made it better because I used to be so shy and so not outgoing and, you know, never took life for granted. And now when I got my spinal cord injury, I do now. I take life way for granted and I'm like so grateful for how much sensation slash movement I have. I'm just grateful for the movement I have. So the one thing that got harder over time is just how, you know, how different my life had become in just a short week. The hardest thing over time is losing my ability. Before my spinal cord injury, I was had some hand movement, not finger function, because uh, my hands are shaped weird. <laughs> I don't know what that Ma what Matthew's doing. Um, my hands were shaped weird, and it. I guess the hardest part over time is losing function of my fingers, losing the only thing I had left 
um, which is not a lot. But that was the real hardest part. It's just losing what I have. Um, I try to find positive about it every single day. <laughs> you see your future. Uh, the fourth question. So how do I see my future? It's going to get easy over time. There's going to be hard parts, but I don't really... I don't know. It's hard to answer that question, uh, but I feel like I'll find myself doing things a lot more, being more independent and knowing and navigating my injury more, more so than I think I have now. So I, I think that's how I imagine my future. I'm sure my future will be well. I imagine all my greatest things happening in those last four years because when you are getting weaker, you have to imagine the best and do the best that you can because you only have limited time. You can't start chasing a dream when it's too late. You have to start immediately. Um, because when you start it too late, the dream's just going to die because you didn't complete it. And the more you focus on that one thing that you really wish to, but you don't ever start on it, you're never going to get there. I would say that I know what my future is going to be, but I also know that it's going to be lovely, lovely moments, lovely memories that I can make with my wonderful wife, my wonderful children. And I, I just can say for a fact that my future will have big moments, bad moments, very terrible moments, but it will be a future nonetheless. So What's the best advice you have for others in your situation? The the best advice I could give someone is take it slow and do the best that you can in every situation because when you have the injury you're going to lose a lot obviously but do the best that with what you got you only live here once so you got to make that one life the greatest no matter what happens so my advice to others with an SEI is no you're not alone you are not alone there are millions and billions of people out there who are understanding your struggle your pain with your SEI you're going to have to learn to adapt adaptation has been here since you were born and you've been learning to adapt ever since you were born now you've been given a new body. You have to adapt. There's no changing that. There's no foreseeable future on that. You have to just adapt each way. So my real process is learn to adapt. Be grateful for what you have. And you're not alone. That is my one advice. What was the hardest part of the first days in the hospital? The hardest part for the first few days was in the hospital was obviously getting my tracheotomy uh tracheostomy too it it was you know uncomfortable and it wasn't and and it was scary at first when i was in the coma it was never fun so i think the hardest days was just being in there and not really knowing my strength and it's about being in the first few days of the hospital was i still had many many years in a coma that was the hardest part because that's what we did not know. Me and my family, we went to the hospital obviously because I had damaged my neck. And it was in the first few days I said, she's going to wake up, she's going to wake up. But that was the hardest part. They did not know I wasn't going to wake up 12 years later. It is the hardest part. I feel like we just didn't know my foreseeable future. And How did you develop an understanding of the injury? I have been interested in medical crap, <laughs> medical stuff, uh, for quite a while, for four, three years, uh, ever since we started college, so four years, and oh. I had been focusing on SEIs for a while, and I was like, I want to learn more about this, and it was during uh, the fun time I was having in, you know, Blakely's class, and she started talking about SEIs, I was like, oh my god, like, I want to learn more about this, so, and she started saying the C, the L, the S, the C, and I was like, wait a minute, and it was, in that month, I had learned what the spinal cord was, but I never knew how much vertebrae were in, I never knew the injury status, I never knew what it could do to you, but it was until one day I had figured out on my own, and it, I know it's sad, but I did not know what the C, the T, the L, the S, the C was, until I realized it clicked cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and coccyx. And I was like, oh my god, I found out! Like, I, I was so excited that I had finally figured out what the names were, because I could never say them. And then I started doing my research, and I started more doing things. So it was what, by the time <clears throat> that I got my entry, I had a lot of knowledge on SCIs because of Doc, um, and because of how much we had figured out. So we had figured out a lot by the time I got my entry, and we've just found out more since my entry. A lot more. So that is basically how I got an understanding of my disability or my injury how much research we did in the beginning uh, i got mine obviously from research as the years and decades had progressed what was your greatest fear at first 
my greatest fear at first was really adapting to the new life because I didn't know what a quadriplegic like being meant realization that I was a quadriplegic I had no finger function I had no triceps no like no yeah a lot um so that was my greatest fear my greatest fear was that I would never wake up um because that was my first fear my first fear was I would never wake up and I would just die and then my second fear was when I looked at the calendar and said, oh my god, it's been a decade. And realized I had spent a decade of my life asleep. So, that's my biggest fear. How do family members respond to the news? I f my dad is a paraplegic. He got paralyzed from too much pressure on his L's. So he's a paraplegic. And he responded to the news. He responded to the news not badly. He was just like, oh... He he's a nice going man now. Um, not going into life history here, but he's a nice going man now. And so he was like wheelchair buddies. He was making light of the situation. Uh, I'm sure in his mind he was scared, but outside he portrayed that we were wheelchair buddies and uh, I was the first quad in the family. So my parents reacted as such in fear, scared, like understandably fear because I know their reactions um my mom was scared that I was going to die and she did not want a DNR um my dad wanted a DNR he because he did not want to see his daughter suffer he wanted to something to happen to my trach in the water and just let me die he wanted to something wrong to go with my suctioning and let me die it wasn't that he did not love me he loved me too much he didn't want me to suffer my mom loved me too, too, too much and wanted me not to essentially suffer, just to stay in the coma. Which, in that life aspect, was suffering. But out of it, I am not suffering. I am living a wonderful life. So I, but I thank both of them for having an open mind during all of it and really talking through all those hard moments after a 12-year coma. Because, understandably, after 12 years, you don't want your daughter to suffer. I, I, clearly. But after 12 years, you want your daughter to live to understand her injury, and you want both sides, but you can't choose. So, we don't know. Uh, I don't know what would have happened if we went Mark's route, my father's. Um, I hopefully would have still been here, but personal support was most helpful to you. My personal support was really Doc and my friends, because some of them had already gone through that, and... Doc especially, because she had gone through that. She knows what the, what it's like to be an SCI for the longest time. And I'm not saying that nobody's uh, injury is not valid, injury time that is, but Doc's was more. So I kind of trusted her a little more in that aspect because she was smart. She is smart. And she knew a little, a lot more about it than you people do, and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, she helped me in that aspect, and she was my biggest support at the time. She was my biggest personal support was when Matthew tried to learn all my care when we got a house together. I think 35. We got a house and he was like, oh my god, like, how do I do this? How do I, like, he was being so supportive and my mom would like, let him join, come in our house and uh, she'll do the procedures on me and he'll finally learn. And also my second biggest support at the time, because in Emmy was not my wife or my girlfriend at the time of my injury or those years or those decades, either, because he stayed there for every ounce of it all. He was 13 when my injury happened, 24 when it ended. That's a huge burden for a teenager to carry, yet he carried it so well. He helped me during the coma. He always held my hand during the coma. He was just a best big brother. Uh, sorry, little brother. Um, so he was very awesome during those moments and that time. So that was my biggest personal support. How did you deal with stress at first? I dealt with it, sadly, in drugs. That's not how I deal with stress now. Um, back then, I used to deal with stress with uh, drugs. Um, now I deal with it, like, as in just being on my phone and stuff and say fuck it more just we can't do anything about the situation we just gotta calm for me it's mm, different i just deal with stress as in writing like i like to write uh, i didn't really i deal dealt with stress <laughs> super bad um i threw my real chair like my manual chair i kicked doors i bit myself like that it's not good uh ocd uh, not blaming everything, but I'm just saying it was a huge part of it. Um, so now I just like to write my emotions. What do you wish you had known at the beginning? Mm, that wouldn't be as bad as you think.
because when you first get injured, you're like, oh, fuck, like, I don't know what's going to happen. What's I wish that I knew, like, what the outcome would be and how, like, awesome my life would be in the end. What were the important milestones in rehabilitation? The important milestones were when I sat up, uh, like, assisted, obviously, but I sat up and I was able to cough myself and I was able to do all these things. Those are the biggest achievements. Uh, in rehabilitation, my biggest achievements were, like, moving my thumbs and stuff. Since I was a complete, and I still am, none of my fingers moved. Not my limbs, not my fingers, not my, like, I couldn't talk. So, the biggest things in rehabilitation was me talking, me barely breathing on my own, and me moving half my thumb and getting top sensation on my hand. Right there. How do you deal with the transition from hospital to home? Dealt with every issue that a quad could at first in the hospital but now that i've gotten used to it and can control it on my control it myself it was a big transition but i basically just took everything as it came there and my family built all these ramps and made the home accessible for me more accessible than it had to be um which is wonderful um so i dealt with the transition a little bad because i thought this isn't me i'm not like no, there's no way I got injured. I'm just getting home after a hospital say, Yeah, very long one, so didn't take it well, but okay now. What's the hardest part about coming home? Knowing that nothing would be the same from when you entered the hospital, because when you entered the hospital you were injured and now nothing would be the same. Came home I realized everyone was older. The hardest part of me was realizing how much time had passed. Do you live independently? Uh, yes and no. If I, if my wife and husband was not in this house, I think I could manage living independently. I feel like if I had the choice, I could live, but I wouldn't. Because, you know, obviously, I, can, there are some tasks I can't do, but I can always manage. I can't live independently. Sure answer, no. Um, because I only have half a thumb, I can't walk, I can't practically move when laying down. So I need people to do my trick care, my G-button care, my nasal feeding care. I need a lot of care throughout the day, so I can't live on my own. How have your family relationships changed? Me and my father's got closer, which is a good thing. Um, because he was a paraplegic, he understood some of the struggles, and I now understood a lot of them. So, yeah, our, we got closer. Our fa my family got closer in uh, relationship-wise because we understood, yeah, she's struggling and we need to help her, but also act like it's neutral. How have your friendships changed? A mm. lot for the better because a lot of us has now sustained SCIs and so we know the struggle of each other's struggles. So it's, we've, we've bonded, we've gotten mm. extra better and same answer as well. What's important to family and friends to understand? It's important to understand that they will never know what we're struggling with, so they can't make assumptions about what we're struggling with. So they're saying, no, it's it's nothing, it's no big, you don't understand, you don't have it. So I feel like family members should take it slow and easy when people are dealing with depression or suicidal thoughts after the injury because they will never understand what it's like to have an SCI. Even no matter how many articles they read, you're not in their situation. What do you do for fun socially? Oh, well, I just talk and chill on my phone. Me too. About sex and dating. We are happily married. Um, and sex, we don't have, we just don't feel comfortable, even though it feels like outrageous to say that. We just don't. We haven't found a way to make it work in the bedroom. Uh, we do get, like, sexy moments, like kissing and cuddling in bed and stuff. Um, but we don't, we haven't had sex. But we are happily married, and I've been happily married to two people. Matthew still successfully, <laughs> and Emmy now. Um, so, yeah, I've had, uh, not sex, but sexual moments and um, intimacy and two relationships. The best sexual advice that we have, or that we got, was just take it slow. Don't really rush into things. Um, uh, it's always important that even when you are having sex uh, as a disabled person, it is important to know that things can still work in the bedroom. You will have to find new positions and new ways, obviously, but you just got to talk with your partner. That's really it. That's what really helped us the most is that you just got to talk through it because, obviously, you can't physically do the emotions now so you're just gonna have to ask for help or assistance from the other partner <laughs> how do you handle anger uh, not well <laughs> no um for me i handle it with beer sadly but i don't get intoxicated drunk um i handle it just by 
quieting down and just sitting. I handle it just by writing. Are you happy? We are both very happy. How did you handle going back to work? I handle going back to work was it, we took a lot of load off my heavy lifting because my job was more manual and lifting and everything. So that was the harder part. So we took a lot of load off and now from nursing, I just write files in the surgery room and I do small surgical prep that I can do. For me, I am a nurse and I have a lot of jobs. Um, my jobs are mainly physical writing and since my thumb still writes very good, I can still perform all those tasks just using my phone that connects to my computer. So it's been fine. Uh, so we've been able to handle our jobs pretty well. We still go to work. We have an active work life. And what kind of work do you do? I do like heavy lifting, like just sending out packages and things that are more heavier, but they've took a lot of workload off. I am a surgeon and a nurse. Um, so for the surgeon stuff, I write notes. I write what goes on during the surgery and operations and what happens. A nursing thing, I uh, I just prep bedding and stuff since I can do that. Um, for me, I do like a lot of broad work, writing things, so I just basically do a lot of writing. So I just grab my phone, start typing away, and uh, my job's finished. <laughs> okay guys, so that was all our questions. We really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a different type of style of video than we normally do, but we really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye! Bye!